Agriculture on the move. 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 Hello again, St. Lucia, and welcome to the program, Agriculture on the Move. I am Philip Sidney, your host. I will say a special uh, welcome to those persons, because this year is our first program for the year. And uh, I would like to wish every farmer, every fisher folk, I'd like to wish the uh, agro-processors, the market vendors, the consumers, and other stakeholders of course, I, I do not want to leave out our technicians at, at GIS, at NTN, Roger, Miguel, and of course, Miss, Miss Lee, the PIO. And to wish every one of you a happy, healthy, and a productive 2022. With me in studio today is the Minister with Responsibility for Agriculture, Fisheries, uh, Food Security, and Rural Development, the Honorable Alfred Prosper. Welcome to the program, sir, and I'd like to wish you, you and your family a productive, healthy 2020, and by extension, I am also wishing you a productive 2020 when it comes to the Ministry of Agriculture and your programs and your policies. Thank you very much, Sydney, and it's a pleasure to be sitting here with you. As you mentioned, this is the first program, and I want to take the opportunity to wish every farmer, fish, uh, livestock farmer, everybody involved in the agricultural sector, mm -hmm. more importantly, the staff of the Ministry of Agriculture, my peers, my deputy peers, my secretary, my driver, the communications unit in particular, mm -hmm. who is now involved in ensuring that we disseminate the information that the public wants to hear about the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. I want to wish everybody a productive 2022, and I hope we can see new things yes. emerging from the agricultural sector. Thank you very much, sir, and welcome to be here. Um, first off, the banana industry. <laughs> very, very serious. Very serious, yeah. eh? Um, mm. I know, I want to go back and rehash what happened last year in terms of you going to, you're leading a task to, in, uh, to England, and um, you know what, what happened. You, 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 you told the, the, the nation, mm -hmm. you know, the results. I know you have appointed a task force um, moving forward to, to understand where we are uh, because we realize the, the market uh, is, very, is very, you know, there's a, f a small window, you know, and it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, we need to ensure that we can ship our bananas again to the UK. Where are we now and what's going to happen to the banana industry? Very good. Um, the, the task force has been appointed by the cabinet. It's an eight-member task force. And the whole responsibility of the task force is to really look at a strategy and action plan for the banana industry. Mm -hmm. We were we had given that commitment to the supermarket people in the UK that there is an urgent need to look at where we are in the banana industry, where we really want to go, and how we want to get there. So the task force has begun its um, its work, mm -hmm. and uh, they've been meeting. As a matter of fact, as I speak, they are supposed to be meeting the BPIP and some other people right there at the Union Tissue Culture um, Conference Room to really engage the key stakeholders involved in the banana industry and to really find and identify the challenges, the issues, the problems, and to see how we can continue to secure the market in the UK. As we all know, the market, the UK market is of tremendous importance to us. We've been there many, many, many decades, and what we saw or what we found out after the, during the visit in the UK is not a rosy picture, and we need to do what we have to to ensure that we continue to secure the market. I have been impressing on the, um, um, reaching out to the farmers, and just last night I met the Grace farmers in the Grace um, community, and I stressed and emphasize the importance of quality and productivity. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping in the next two weeks, three weeks, the task force will submit a report to the cabinet that will provide some guidance in terms of where we are, what are some of the challenges, 
and where we want to go. I know our farmers are under tremendous financial pressure because they have not been, most of them have not been selling bananas since Hurricane Elsa. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the things that have been coming up. Increased price of fertilizer and other farm inputs. Right. And we all know the COVID has impacted on that. Raw materials have become more expensive. Shipping has become more expensive. And at the end of the day, the farmers have to bear the brunt of this problem in terms of having to pay almost double mm -hmm. the price they were paying for a bag of fertilizer in the last few months. Mm -hmm. It is something that my ministry, the cabinet, you know, we are looking into to see how we can make it much easier for our farmers. More of ladies say farmer, ça c'est un problème nous savent qui can affect you. Et nous regarder ça nous ça fait pour faire yo hen sel et lot bagay yo bousin pour figla. A de en puis yo kaisa kaisa en fait yo comfortable mm -hmm. pour ça acheter because nous savent a même là nous garder nous voulez quality. Si c'est farmer pas ni sel là, yo pas ni ces lot produit encore. Um Vai de texte l'autre bail rebousien nous pas rejoindre une qualité mm -hmm. on voulait faire pile là pour ces femmes là nous va garder dans ça et tout de suite nous ca ça do comment on ca ça en un sacsel avec différents bagages comme ça so it's a very important and significant aspect of the banana industry mm -hmm. and i'm hoping that the task force report will bring some level of confidence in the market in terms of demonstrating to the uk um, people that we are ready and we are dealing with the issues and challenges that they have been concerned about with regards to our quality of our bananas over the last few months. So after that report is done, and what, what timeline um, uh, the task force has to de de deliver that report? And then from that report, what's next? Well, I would really like to first say that what is really important for us is to get a report to the supermarket people up in, in the UK to indicate that we have made the commitment in terms of doing something. Okay. We made that promise, and fives in particular <laughs> said to us that unless we see some level of attention being given to addressing the, the issues in the banana industry, they will not engage us. Mm -hmm. So we gave them a timeline of end of January, early February, that we hope we can say to them, this is what we've done since our last meeting in the UK. Mm -hmm. This is the report. Let's continue our discussion to ensure that we, we, we met. But it's a serious matter. It is, yes. It is one thing to have something in a report to say, this is what we're going to do. But to do but it. It must be implemented. Be action, it must be implemented mm -hmm. on the ground. Definitely. And the farmers have a very important role Critical to play role in terms to of making sure yeah. that it's yeah. happening yeah. with the support from the ministry with the support from government. Okay, so what's going to happen moving on with, for example, the BPIP uh, and the continuation of assisting with the agronomy and, of course, increasing production? One of uh, 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 a serious concern for me with the BPIP is when I got in this, this ministry, into this ministry, I was told that the BPIP life is coming to an end at the end of March mm -hmm. this year mm -hmm. because the, 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 the contract or the support given by the Taiwanese was for fi a five-year period. Mm -hmm. But here is it, we are focusing on quality mm -hmm. to ensure that we secure the UK market. But we have an entity, which is the BPIP, mm -hmm. that was very focused on quality, production, health, nutrition, etc. is now coming to an end. Mm -hmm. So we now have to consider leaf spot. Mm -hmm. That's a continuing problem, a continuing con concern. Mm -hmm. And we must ensure that we continue to focus the on dealing with the problem. Yes, yes, so yes. we are now com contemplating setting up a very small unit mm -hmm. to continue with technical people who have been involved in the, the black sea tower control mm -hmm. and so on so we can get the oil and the materials that we need to ensure that we continue focusing Beautiful. on quality well done yes. okay now uh it will be remiss of me not not uh mentioning in talking bananas so Lucia is going is going bananas based on <laughs> a, a, a statement our prime minister made and i mean the, that statement for me was the best statement he made. There's very, nothing very wrong with the statement. statement. You know, I mean, we have been pushing our uh, consumption of bananas in St. Lucia, not now. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have in the making, we're just get, hoping to get it printed, since 2019, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 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 a banana recipe book. Book. 
We have mm -hmm. about 50, 60 recipes in that already. And all we need to get is get, get it funded and get it d distributed. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand what was the problem mm -hmm. with and, and, and all the who ha ha you know, on, on social media. What's your take on that? Well, I must see, and I want to commend the Prime Minister for making this statement because I see it as a very, very good marketing strategy yes. <laughs> for our bananas. Definitely. A marketing strategy, strategy, and it's coming from the head of the state, the Prime Minister yes, of St. Lucia. And exactly. I want to say, PM, thank you for this statement because it has really promoted bananas island-wide. Worldwide. <laughs> Worldwide, to be exact. And I want to make this point that some people seem to forget the social and economic impact that the banana industry has had on St. Lucia. That's right. My education came from it. My parents used to be involved in it, and that is how they used to take care of, of the kids, the family. You know, you have farmers who have been there from age 17 growing bananas, and they are still into banana production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I really found it really strange, after a statement like that, that some persons took it so negatively I mean, you saw this photo with the PM dressed in a banana leaf. Yes, <laughs> and yes. then I was standing next to him, and all the cabinet, or most of the cabinet yes. members were there. <laughs> I love it. And whoever <laughs> felt that, that it was going to create an, a problem for, for I love it yes. because it's helping me as the Minister for Agriculture mm -hmm. to promote bananas. Yes, yes. But just take a look at it. We've known bananas to be exported to the UK very often, mm -hmm. the days of the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. But what are we doing in terms of local consumption of what we grow? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there has always been this term, buy local, buy local. Mm -hmm. If every single St. Lucian, <coughs> you have a population of approximately 175,000 people. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if every person <coughs> sorry, consumes one banana a day, a day that is 175,000. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if those same persons could consume two. Mm -hmm. You know the amount of consumption of our own bananas we, we, we would, we, we, that would be happening in St. Lucia? Yeah, well, what about value added? <coughs> value, value added and, and so on. You, you so many other things understand. can. We are exporting bananas to places like Barbados. Yeah. But we get Barbados is taking our bananas mm -hmm. and producing various products. Banana flour, all of that. Banana flour. Yes, yes. And it comes back, back to, to us. us. Exactly. To purchase. Exactly, exactly. So I want persons to take the statement that the PM made and think of how we can use banana, our own bananas that we, we have in St. Lucia and to produce other products from it. Banana flour, banana, yeah, yeah, so many things yes. that can happen. Definitely, definitely. And you know, let's utilize our bananas because we know what is happening in the market. We can see that the market potential is not the same as it. Mm -hmm. Let's think of innovative ways mm -hmm. to utilize our own bananas. <laughs> So every 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 they thought it was it was negative, but then it became a positive. positive. In fact, right now <coughs> it's green gold, you know. It's green gold. You understand? Yes. Uh, after Elsa, people were, were going to the supermarkets and they couldn't get bananas. They couldn't and, get and it, and they, and they were bawling over the place. Exactly. People, people were selling bananas at a very high price high at that price. time. Yes. So so what's the problem? Yes. In fact, we are going to be having a. A, a banana festival, yes, pretty soon. Which is a very and then good I'm, I'm going to bring in all stakeholders. I want to bring in the chefs. I want to bring the schools to participate. Mm -hmm. And of course, by then the recipe book will be printed yes. uh, for for distribution. We're going bananas. Look out for it. Very but, good. But but we, uh, we 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 must ensure that we 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 get um, the, to educate our populace to mm -hmm. understand we are our, our health. I mean, there's so many health, you know, benefits benefits. So many from bananas. From bananas. So yes. before we get, we get to break, I just want to go to another program that is very close to you, which is the Seven Crops pro um, yes. program. Tell us the about The second this. phase of the program, we launched it sometime the first week of January, yeah. and it was a follow-up to the first phase, which I was told contributed to a reduction in the food import bill. Correct. <coughs> I believe, I'm strongly convinced that we are importing too much of what we can produce and or grow in St. Lucia. And we need to ensure that we continue to focus on the seven crops program. This phase, it will not just be seven crops, there'll be other um, crops that will be added. Mm -hmm. But it's all in an effort to really engage the farmers and to ensure that we can continue to produce what we 
eat in St. Lucia as much as possible. Mm -hmm. We will be engaging the farmers like we did in the first phase, but I have also <coughs> encouraged more farmers to participate because there are some <coughs> sorry incentives that are available for those farmers in terms of irrigation supplies, um, um, the other inputs. farm inputs mm -hmm. that are, are, are sold to farmers at a subsidized price. Mm -hmm. But we know the fertilizer, we know the, um, those inputs are expensive, <coughs> but we are giving support under the program for that. Mm -hmm. But it's really for us to, <coughs> sorry, look towards reducing the food import bill mm -hmm. and to be self-sufficient in what we, we grow. Yeah. On grow. Definitely. <coughs> in fact, so, go, go if, if I may go back to the, second, the, the first phase, we did achieve, I know, at least mm -hmm. five of those crops um, we, we reduced on the, uh, the, the importation. Yes. And, 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 and that, to me, sp speak volume. Volumes. You, you understand? But I wanted to continue yes. declining. Yes. Because as we, much as possible. Definitely, because the other <coughs> phase is for, fi is for f five years, right? Yes, five so, years. So definitely we, we have, we have um, yes, you know, so, a lot to do. Okay? But one of the things I want this phase to include mm. is a mechanization component. Yeah, hold that spot because you're going for a break. Yes. You're watching Agriculture on the Move. Stay tuned, don't go away. Banana farmers, remember me? I destroyed the Gromichel banana variety some years ago. Now, my cousin, Tropical Race 4 or TR4, a Fusarium wilt banana disease is on the horizon in a more aggressive form and can wipe out the banana industry in a flash. Be vigilant. Don't bring any banana plants or plant tissue into the island. Report any unusual symptoms on your banana plots to the Department of Agriculture at telephone 468-5600 or the extension officer in your area. Remember, protect our vital banana industry. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. Of course, with me, if you just joined in, is our Honorable Alfred Prosper, who is the Minister responsible for Agriculture. And of course, Mr. Prosper, we were talking about the, uh, the success of the Seven Crops mm -hmm. uh, program uh, in its first phase, and we are moving into a second phase for the next five years. And one of the, the, the components that we really, that's, that's really important for the success of uh, that program is mechanization. mechanization. Uh, farmers are talking about this. Um, it is still, we, we have some equipment, but it is still not there yet. Mm -hmm. Because farmers are still complaining, not getting that service on time. time. So where are we with this and moving, moving forward? The important thing about farming is to reduce your cost of production. Mm -hmm. And just imagine a farmer has to plow half an acre of land using a hand fork. That's right. He will spend a lot more time and money doing that as against if he has a small rotor tiller. Mm -hmm. We've seen farmers planting and digging hundreds of holes for bananas, planting and so on. But there are various forms of equipment that can do that mm -hmm. mechanically. Right. And so I want the seven crops to embrace that component and use it as a means of demonstrating to the farming sector that there are various equipment available that can be used to make it easier for you and to reduce your cost of production. Mm -hmm. I'm also concerned that doing that will also make agriculture more sexy for our young people to, mm -hmm. to get in. Because our young people will not come in and take a knapsack sprayer, yeah. pump it and mm -hmm. pump it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. throughout the day. That's right. When you can get a knapsack sprayer that is battery operated, all the person has to do is to hold the handle and mm -hmm. spray. Mm -hmm. You know, rotor tillers, you know, that should be a replacement for the hand fork. And I'm not in any way saying that I have a problem with the cutlass and the, and the fork. And they the, can be used and when necessary. And so on, but yes. they can be used. But I'm saying if we really want to take mm -hmm. agriculture seriously mm -hmm. and we want to reduce our cost of production, mm -hmm. we must go in this direction. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that um, the seven, this phase of the seven cro crops program will demonstrate a lot of those new forms of mechanization, new technology in the sector that will really make farmers a lot met, um, better in terms of profit making mm -hmm. and really to encourage younger persons to get into the as, as we're on the seven crop program, uh, one of the main uh, areas of concern, uh, <coughs> like you even heard at the, some of the meetings we attended mm -hmm. with the farmers, yes. was the sale of the produce. 
And of course, the you non-marketing know, board has been restructured, and we're hoping that uh, they will definitely take the lead in that regard. And I know they have been giving farmers contracts and stuff like mm -hmm. this. Uh, what's your take on with, with farmers still having that problem? Well, I'm very concerned about the status of the marketing, St. Lucia Marketing Board, because I always um, um, believe that that entity is really supposed to be buying, if not all. It should be all. That's most me. <laughs> of what mm -hmm. our farmers produce. Mm -hmm. But there are other institutions like Massey, who probably is competing with the marketing board. The marketing board does not have the financial resources to buy and to be able to pay all the farmers on time. Because one thing to ask your farmers to produce. Mm -hmm. Your farmers produce and they are ready to have it by a certain time. But the farmers needs to know that they are going to be paid for the produce at a certain time so they can continue their production. Right. Now it is one thing to say we sell into marketing board or we sell into the hotels. But we have to wait two months to get pay. Mm -hmm. And as you men I mentioned hotels, I'm very concerned about the length of time the hotels that the hotels paid. take to pay the farmers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just imagine you're waiting two months, three months to get pay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> imagine yes, yes. if you have to go into continuous production, you will be stranded because you may not have the financial resources to go into other crops and right. to you know, to continue to you know make money. Mm -hmm. So I'm 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 saying all of this to see. <clears throat> I want to see the marketing board be more sustainable in terms of buying from the farmers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. making sure that the farmers continue to place and trust the marketing board mm -hmm. as an entity that they can call and say, I I am not I have two hundred pounds of watermelons, but not to be told by the marketing board. I can only take 150 yes, pounds. Yes, yes. Now the marketing board has to look at its whole operations now and maybe think of storage. Most important. Storage is important. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we see gluts in cucumbers, we see gluts in watermelons. But if you have a storage facility that we can store, buy and store for a period of two, three weeks, then that problem can be solved. Mm -hmm. But I believe the marketing board, I am confident there is a new board <laughs> in place I'm very confident I can see from what I've been hearing, they are very focused, and I believe that soon from now we'll see more confidence by the farmers in terms of delivery of service by the marketing board in terms of meeting their needs mm -hmm. and challenges. I cannot forget, of course, um, our agro-processors. Because, Mr. Minister, let me tell you, their COVID, yes, had again negatives but the, a lot of positives <coughs> came from covid people well, decided look let, i know uh let them be innovative yeah. you know there are so many young people out there that <laughs> i i am you know i'm noticing that are involved in in agro processing you know mm -hmm. so what's your ministry doing in terms of taking agro processing to the next level i think that is a that is one of the most critical needs of the ministry in terms of reviewing this whole agro processing <coughs> sector mm -hmm. by itself mm -hmm. because we are producing a lot and there are markets available, not just locally, mm -hmm. but outside of St. Lucia for those products. Mm -hmm. But I believe we need to really find ways to engage those persons and to really give them the support that they need to increase production in terms of whatever they do. Mm -hmm. I have seen persons, I know of persons who are producing um, tea bags from mm -hmm. um, cinnamon and yeah, yeah. so many. Sour sap and the whole world. Sour sap leaves mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So many of those persons who are involved in it. But for me, I notice some of them are hidden. Yeah. You don't really see them in the forefront. Yes, yes, you just true. hear it on the, on, on the side mm -hmm. that I bought this from this person. Mm -hmm. But how we can come in mm -hmm. and give these people support so we can see them in the forefront Definitely. and not somebody doing something in the backyard yes, right. and it's only on a Friday or Saturday you see them by the market right, selling. Right, yeah. You know, we need to promote those um, <coughs> products, let people know where they are, how to find them, and I believe it will be it will go well for us as a ministry. Definitely, but definitely, the agro processing sector is very very critical, and I believe it is an, an, an in the, a direction that our ministry, our government needs to take to really push that sector. And I'm using my program, you know, as a vehicle to really expose a lot mm -hmm. of those hidden persons. Hidden persons eh? Trust yes. me, this year you'll see yes. a lot of that. Yeah, we need a lot, to a lot of that. showcase Trust them. Me. And, you know, let people. Know Definitely. What doing. The livestock industry. Um, mm -hmm. I know uh, we are looking <coughs> at again our meat processing facility, mm -hmm. the MPF in VA4. Mm -hmm. I heard you said it's going to stay there. Um, yes. I, I'm also hearing about Volet is develop, developing mm -hmm. well. I'm hope, I don't know how soon we'll get to Volet. T what, what's, what, tell us about where we are. 
Well, first I will start with the meat processing facility. Mm -hmm. That facility was funded by the Taiwanese government, costing millions of dollars. <laughs> and the DSH, when it came in, the plan was to break it down. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a sad, sad state of affairs to know that a country is given a donation by the Taiwanese government to take care of our, our livestock problems. Mm -hmm. But yet, it was earmarked to be disintegrated. But I have been informed that this is, a, this is going to be a reverse situation, that it will not be broken down. I'm right. hoping that it will remain as is mm -hmm. to help meet the needs of our livestock farmers in Central Russia. Beautiful. We are still importing high quantities of pork. And I think we can be self-sufficient in pork mm -hmm. once that meat processing facility remains. From what I, I was told by the PS, there is not much that needs to be done to get it operational. Right. But we need to have the, the quantity of livestock yeah, the on the ground mm -hmm. to ensure that it is sustainable. You don't want to open the meat processing facility and you only have stock for one day a week or twice a week. Yeah, yeah, it has to yeah. be sustainable. Yeah. And we have to now think of getting our products outside to the various OECS countries, the mm -hmm, Caribbean. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm very concerned about it. I'm hoping that it will remain there and we, we can make it operational okay. to meet the <coughs> livestock needs, the meat, poultry, pork, and other meats that we import. Mm -hmm. So we can reduce on the imports Location. of those commodities. Okay, uh, Volet. Bosse issue to Volet. Volet. Sadly, I mean, honestly, <laughs> I, 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 my sentiments always have always been the Bosse issue. Maybe as, yes. as a student, you know, going around the island, on, you know, you go to Bosse issue to see all the animals. But uh, is, as it may, we have a new site, and yes. I know it's developing quite nicely. It's so developing quite are. nicely, mm -hmm. but I'm hoping that by now we would have moved the animals at uh, for a cross yeah. so that we can begin full operation. Yeah. But I know as we speak, the uh, office building is, being, is under construction. Okay. There were some roadworks that um, I was told are near completion. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as possible, we will be moving the stock that we currently have, have at Safa mm -hmm. to Volet, and we can begin operation there. My hope is that it will attract the young people to come in and purchase the piglets and so on, so they can, we can really boost the livestock sector in St. Lucia, and we can get more persons to benefit directly from the, the, the Boseju in terms of the work that the ministry intends to undertake mm -hmm. at Boseju. Okay, as we about to end our first, because that, that program is a two-part program, mm -hmm. so that's, that, that's um, part one, so we're about to end part one. Uh, do you have any final words? On yes, I want to say, we need to really look at this ministry. The changes that have taken place in terms of COVID, we, we were not aware COVID would ever be there. Mm -hmm. And we know what COVID has done in terms of food security. I think there is an urgent need for us to look at the ministry and reposition the ministry to be able to deal with the challenges of, for example, COVID, climate change. Climate change will always impact us mm -hmm. as a sector. And so we must ensure that we reposition the ministry to really take on those challenges and to be able to ensure that we engage our farmers and other stakeholders, the fishers, the livestock farmers, the CMOS farmers, mm -hmm. and really work with them in terms of dealing with the challenges of climate change and COVID. Thank you very much. Thank sir. you for having me there. Mm -hmm. And I must say, I hope that the St. Lucian populace, especially the farmers and other stakeholders in the sector, would have benefited quite a lot from our discussion today. Definitely, I hope so. Thank you for being here. And of course, we are going to end here for the first part of the program because there's so many things. Yeah, lots of issues. After you discuss the, 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 what they call the fishery sector. Yes. So thank you for being here. You've thank been watching you Agriculture on the Move. I would like to say thank you for viewing the program. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, even if they say you go in bananas, that's not a problem because yeah. we have to go bananas for us to, to eat bananas. bananas. Really? And you have to grow bananas. We are coming, as, as I, um, I said to you early, we are going to be having a banana festival and you'll see all the derivatives from bananas. And trust me, you, after that, 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 that show, you will, you will go bananas and you'll eat more bananas. Thank you for viewing. I want to thank, of course, my 
technical team from the Ministry of Agriculture, um, Zarik and also um, uh, Mr. Odlam, uh, for giving me the support that they gave me for the past year. And I'm hoping to have them again to, to give more support to ensure that we have a good program. Thank you for being again. I'm Philip Sidney saying goodbye and see you again. Agriculture on the move. 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 Agriculture on the move.